Oh my, it's been a while, hasn't it? Hey, YouTube, I'm finally back after, I don't know, a month or something. Uh, I was supposed to release a video about the beta release of Nimdo uh, around June 1st. Had a little problem. Uh, basically, I was trying to implement a status bar, which was going to be with Polybar. We had partial implementation. I was talking to the, to the developers about it and uh, it just wasn't going to happen. Polybar isn't going to support the needs of my window manager. So I went ahead and figured out how the hell to implement my own bar, which is what you're seeing up here, actually. This is built into Nimdo. It was its own repo for a little bit. Then I decided it was easier and better just to integrate it directly into the project. So that's what you're seeing up here at the top. Hopefully you can see it pretty well. We have our tags one through nine listed here on the left. You have your status bar, uh, sorry, your, your window title rendered in the center of the status bar here. So here you'd see it's the title of my GitHub page here in Firefox. So I go over here, it goes to ST, it's my terminal, um, changes dynamically, pretty cool. It was a lot of fun to implement. And finally over here, this is where your customized status would go. And this is the same exact way that DWM implements their own status. So let me go ahead and scroll through here. First of all, I got a nice table of content set up. So let's go ahead and go on status bar. And down here, setting the status, it says it's implemented the same exact way that DWM does it. And you could just use the tool X set root to set the name of the root window. And that's what controls that. So let me get out of, uh, get out of Vim here and show you a little example. So here we can go ahead and just type X set root. And I'm gonna go ahead here and call the date command and then nimdo. So if you're not familiar with the date command, it just outputs the date. So you'll see my status bar change here. So this is the output of the date command and then a space, a hyphen, and then Nimdo. So that's how you set the status essentially in DWM and Nimdo, same exact way. So if you're transitioning from DWM, you want to give this a try and you have a script that sets your status bar, you can go ahead and run it. That's exactly what I'm doing coming from DWM. And I go ahead and linked a, uh, a page here to the Suckless website that talks about setting the status. And it has a link here to multiple tools at the bottom. Uh, something I really like is called DWM blocks. That's right here. Um, just go ahead and, and check that out. It's pretty cool. Um, anyway, let me go ahead and, and reset my status back to uh, what it was before. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of the other things that I've implemented. I'm not sure exactly where I, I was last time when I was talking about that. Some of these uh, weren't checked. I think floating window support wasn't checked. So go ahead and create another terminal. I'm just gonna have my files listed here. So you can go ahead and use the Windows key or super key, whatever you wanna call it, and left click and drag around. And then same for right click, you can go ahead and, and resize your window to whatever size. Uh, you can full screen windows. So there's a shortcut for that, it's default uh, super F. And that covers the status bar and everything on the monitor. Um, and you toggle it again when it goes right back to where it was before. And if you want to put a floating window back into this layout, you just do window space. And of course this is all configurable through the configuration file. Um, so we actually have a, uh, a wiki link. If I can go ahead and show you this really quick, uh, you can go ahead and, and read through the configuration file section. That's all I have listed so far, but, uh, every single setting that you can have in the configuration file is going to be listed here. Uh, some of the, some of the examples about colors using hex and this, the terms are pretty self-explanatory, but I go ahead and add a little, uh, line of text here. Hopefully that helps somebody that might be confused just starting out. Uh, and the config file of course is Toml, super easy to read. So you can take a look at it here and I'm just going to go ahead and quickly explain some of the stuff. So let me go ahead and, and full screen this and uh, zoom in just a little bit. So uh, first thing I want to note is before we get to like the window manager specific settings, you could have a little start process table. So it's called a table in, in Toml. And this essentially executes a command as if you ran it on your own terminal. So for instance, here I have a uh, D menu run, which is my runner. So if I go ahead and press Windows P, what I have it mapped to, that pops up and I can run applications from here. So that's how this is set up. Basically, you have your key modifiers, which are things like your super key, control, shift, and whatnot. And then your key, you wanna have it mapped to. I'll explain why this is an array in, in a little bit when we get down a little further. 
So you can go ahead and add key bindings to start these external processes. Uh, next is our auto start block. Uh, so I, I have these commented out. You comment out Tommel with the uh, Octothorpe, if you want to call it a, a pound or a hashtag, whatever. Um, so for instance, if, if I had this uncommented, both of these, as soon as Nimdo started, Firefox and ST both would open automatically. Um, I don't have anything. I don't like auto starting applications. So, yep, it's there for you. Next up are the general settings. This is more like layout specific, talking about uh, gaps, borders, colors, uh, the bar fonts, which is really important. These two are actually the default. So if you have, um, let me go ahead and, and unfull screen this for a second. So if you have a, a default monospace font set up, it might render all of the text fine, but if you end up putting like emojis or something in your status bar and your monospace font doesn't have that, which you know probably won't, it, then they just won't render. They'll just be like blank spaces or something. Um, so this is a, a popular emoji font. So I included that as well. Uh, it's the one that I use. If you have something else, you can go ahead and search for it with your, um, like FC cache tool, uh, or whatever you have on your system, go ahead and, and put whatever fonts you want. It, they are listed in priority. So first it will try rendering each character one at a time with the first font. And if it fails, it'll move on to the next font. If it fails, it'll go on to the next font. So your first font listed that has the character available will be the font the character is rendered with. Uh, so let's move on. Now, the rest of this is just controls. So this is doing things like moving windows around, full screening applications, closing applications. Uh, here's like destroy selected window. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, and demonstrate this really quick. So um, first of all, it might be difficult to see, but there's a little green border around the window. So if I move here and then here, it's just a one pixel green border. Um, so that, that kind of tracks the focus. So right now, the bottom right terminal is focused. And if I want to focus the previous window, I would press super and K. And of course, super is like your uh, windows key or whatever. So that focuses the previous window in the stack. Our layout is a, the master stack layout. So you have a master one on the left and then a stack of windows on the right. So if I open a bunch of windows, they're just going to open over here. And of course, that, that, that's adjustable because some people like having multiple windows on the left. So there's key binding for that as well. Uh, for me, it's super Z. We'll move a window to the left. So now like two windows could be over here and then the rest would open over here and you keep adding more to there. Um, and then super X adjust it the opposite way. And you could even remove all of them. So then they're just like this. If you want to do that for some reason, you can, that's pretty much why that's there. So anyway, focusing the previous window is super K and then focusing the next window is super J and this does loop around. So if I get to the last window here, I press it again. Now Firefox is highlighted on the left. It's selected. Um, go ahead and close these. And then, you know, basically that's, that's how the rest of these are going to go. Um, same for like moving a window to the previous position, same thing, except now you're holding uh, shift as well. So super shift K super shift J it's going to move the windows around in the stack. Uh, so that's basically how the, how the layout works. Uh, there's only one layout right now. I'll add some more in the future when I feel that there's a, uh, a need for it. If anyone really wants it, uh, toggling full screen, I showed you already. It's super F press it again to return destroy selected window. Just, it kills the window, uh, here. Uh, okay. I can explain why there are multiple keys listed here. So this is going to change in the future to be a little bit more modular. But essentially what happens here is each one of these keys are options and then each, wh whatever key you press, like one, two, three, whatever, all the way to nine, that number is passed into the function that handles whatever you pressed. So for instance, here you see on the very top left, one is green. This is the, the tag that we have selected. So if we want to go to two, so super and shift is the binding and then we press two and now we're on the second tag. You can see that's green. Um, Little note, if there's a little square here, that means that there's just, there's a window on that tag. Um, get used to that. And then I press one again, I'm gonna go back to one. So each one of these keys is like an option. Uh, and there's only, I think like these two functions that utilize it right now. Um, yeah, so that one was go to tag, the one we just did. And then move window to tag is super shift and then whatever. So that'll move your selected window, whatever window you have highlighted into that tag. Uh, 
Oh, next up, something that we didn't have implemented before is multi-head support. So if you have more than one monitor that's supported, you have a status bar in each window as well. And they're all independent of each other. So you have tags one through nine on your first monitor and tags one through nine on your second monitor. So technically if you have 18 tags, if you have two monitors and that, that keeps going up, I'm going to implement a more advanced tag system in the future. So you're going to have a ridiculous amount of tags and be able to manage that super easily. I'll do a, a future video about that once I start implementing it. And then of course, shortcuts to move your focus between the two monitors shortcuts to move windows between the two monitors. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much all I want to show. Oh, of course, toggle floating. Like I showed you before, when you, you move a window around and you want to put the window back in to the layout, it's super space. But if you want to move it out of the layout without actually moving it around for some reason, you could just press super space and now it's, it's floating. It stays in place, but it's floating. Um, you can do whatever you want with it. Okay, so that's pretty much all for the settings. You can go through here and read things if I went too fast or want some clarity. Um, if you want some other implementation that hasn't been added yet, uh, check the check the issues list. I've been adding issues myself just to keep notes on what I want to implement in the future. So go check that, see if there's something there that you want to have implemented and go ahead and open an issue. Uh, of course, installation, you can go ahead and read this stuff. I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, some of the, the cool things are, um, it, this is a screenshot essentially of, of my, uh, my setup. This is one of my friends who's helping contribute, um, you know, you know, met him on discord through some other open source application. So let's go ahead and look at this. He has a pretty cool sleek setup. Mine's, mine's pretty basic. So I'm going to open this in FEH. So here we are pretty cool. He has a uh, different color scheme set up. And here he's like editing his status bar. He wrote his own status bar implementation that you see like up here on the right and go, uh, that's open source as well. You can go ahead and check his stuff out. This is, you can find him on GitHub. He's been submitting issues and PRs and all that. So I think that's basically it. You can go down to this roadmap and see what's been implemented and what we are going to implement for 1.0. This list is going to grow enormously basically for the past few weeks. Um, I, I did finish the status bar and all of that about like the end of the first week of June, but the past few weeks I've been focusing on polishing up the window manager and kind of fixing up bugs and things like that. So, uh, go ahead, give it a try. You can open, open up issues or leave comments, uh, asking how to set things up. If something isn't clear about the installation, if you're on an arch based system, just use the AUR. I maintain Nindo dash bin. It's a, it's a binary install or you can build from source. Uh, you know, go ahead and try it out. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video.